Hello everyone, welcome back to part three of creating your own Siri or Alexa virtual assistant. I'm actually going to specifically do an R2D2 unit so that R2D2 is going to be talking back to us in different random sounds and it's also going to be displaying the text for us. I've been getting a lot of requests that I should do this part three uh, because everyone wants to know how to build your program so that your program is listening for a key word. For example, when it comes to Siri, you have to say, hey Siri, and then it will pop up and ask you questions. Or same with Google, you can say, okay Google, or hey Alexa. But with this one today, we are going to use R2D2 and we are going to get it to talk back to us and take some commands. So let's get started. So if you've been following me for the past couple of videos, part one and part two, to, we have built this and this is working very nicely if you don't remember how it should be working how may I help you? show me how to create dessert on YouTube okay I will bring it up on YouTube for you okay and now it's bringing up uh, some kind of video on dessert on YouTube for me so that's working very well so if you haven't seen these parts, this is vital for this part three. So go ahead and watch part one and part two and come right back to create your R2D2 unit. The first thing that I wanna focus on is getting R2D2 to recognize that we are giving it some kind of keyword or phrase so that he can activate. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to still use this get audio. Get audio was a function that we created so that the program will listen to what you're saying and it will send that response to a, a recognized Google source and it's going to send back our text for us. So what I want to do is I actually want to create a conditional that if we say something specific, then activate and take a command for us. So I'm actually going to get rid of play sound and speech right here. We are going to use that a different way. So with our microphone as our source, it's still gonna get our audio and it's gonna listen. So that's what's gonna be listening for our command. And now let's go ahead and create command. And what I wanted to do is I wanted just to print what we said. So I'm gonna say print speech text, they'll display what we said. Now let's set up a way for it to recognize a command. I want my program to activate when I specifically say the words R2D2. So I'm gonna say if, and this needs to be a string, and make sure this is in all caps, R2-D2. If R2-D2 is in speech text, then what I want it to do is I want it to say speech, sorry, speech, uh, that is our function up here. If you don't remember what this does, this was um, activating a sound to let the user know that it's now time to speak. This was also talking to us in English, so our Siri was saying whatever we wanted. Uh, we'll get rid of some of that here pretty soon, but I still want it to play this sound over here. So speech, and I'm going to send it, I'll do backslash T, which means tab, and say, how may I help you? and then I want it to play that sound. So I'm gonna say play sound. And I'm gonna do that same activation one right here. So the how I get to it is dot forward slash sounds because that's in my sounds folder and then the name of this file which is activate dot wave. I'm just gonna see if that recognizes if we say R2D2. The rest of the program might crash, but that's fine. I just want to see if it works. R2D2. How may I help you? So you can see that that worked pretty nicely so far. I pushed run and my program did nothing. It was waiting for me to say the word R2D2. I could have technically said other stuff and it wouldn't have done anything, but saying R2D2 specifically uh, is now activating it. Good job with that. So we're gonna come up here to the top of our function and I'm gonna say while true, this will just automatically run. Let's go ahead and indent all this. So it's now inside of our loop. And now I'm gonna say keep listening. I'm gonna say else uh, let's break, okay. And then I'm going to just cut out that print because we have that up here now. And we actually want this return to be outside of our loop because I don't want this to break. 
So the reason that we're gonna be doing this while loop is that we want to use the same functionality of getting my speech and everything so I don't have to write it twice. Um, so it's going to listen for us. Once we say R2D2, it'll say, how may I help you? And it'll give us the activation sound so that it is telling the user that it's time to talk. Um, and then this will loop back and it will look for our command. So we can ask it to tell us a joke or look something up online or look something up on YouTube. And once it does, it's going to break out the loop. It's going to return that text um, that we that Google has sent us back. And now we can run our commands. So let's see if that works. R2D2. How may I help you? Tell me a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo, boo, boo. Don't cry. I was just telling a joke. Okay, so you can see that that is working pretty good so far. But now I think I want to go ahead and add some sounds for R2-D2. And something that I did is I went ahead and I grabbed some sounds for us. And if you look down here, I've downloaded three sounds and I can include these inside of the show notes if you wanna download these sounds for R2-D2 or if you want to keep your virtual assistant just talking back to you in English or whatever language you selected, you can do that as well. But let's go ahead and get those sounds in. So let me grab these sounds and I'm just going to drag and drop them right into my sounds library here. Okay, so here's my sounds directory and I'm just going to drag and drop each one. Okay, I just sped up ahead and did that for you. So these are all now in here and looks like that these were MP3 files, okay? And you can call these whatever you'd like. But my logic here is, is that I'm going to create a list and this list is going to have all three of those files. And I want R2D2 to choose a random file to play. So he's not saying the same thing every single time. So if you want to add more sounds, you can, but I'm just gonna stick with three sounds for right now. I do want this to be random. So we are going to import the random library. So import random. And then somewhere towards the top, we can go ahead and make that list. I'm just gonna call this R2 sounds equals a list of so the square brackets. And inside, I need to do a path to each of these, okay? So we are going to say, uh, this is all string, of course, dot forward slash. So I need to go to sounds, forward slash, and then I'll do this first one. And it does need to be spelled exactly the same. Uh, same with your casing, so capital B, so beeping, underscore, and underscore whistling kind of a long name, you can uh, change the names if you want, dot mp3, okay? And now it's time for our second one. We're gonna do a comma, and again, dot forward slash, sounds forward slash, and I'm gonna do capital R2, underscore taking the com link, dot mp3, comma, and then R2 underscore says taking to himself. So someone made a typo right there, but it doesn't need to be the same. So I can say taking to himself dot MP3. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the random library to randomly choose one of these to play using our play sound that we already have. So where I want to do it is I don't want it to play this one right here anymore. This is the one that's talking to us. So when it says, how may I help you? That's the lady saying that in English. So I'm just going to comment that out. And instead I'm going to put R2's random sounds in here. So I'm gonna say play sound. And what sound do we want? We want to do a random one. So random dot choice. And inside of there, we are going to put the name of this list, which is R2 sounds. So hopefully that will choose a random sound. And I'm just gonna copy that line because I also want it to speak to me down here. So when it comes to some kind of response, I still want it to play r 2 t 2 sound, but I still want it to say these things. So like, okay, I will bring that up on YouTube for you, or it'll tell us a joke or whatever you want the command to say back. So let's just see if this works with the sounds. R2D2. Tell me a joke. 
okay? And it looks like it said, unable to load the sound named that. So the one R2D2 talking to himself, I didn't like the name of that file. So maybe I spelt it wrong. So R2 taking to himself dot mp3 and that's the problem i forgot to give it a path so i forgot to say dot forward slash sounds forward slash now that should find it just fine r2d2 show me how to make dessert on youtube Perfect. So you can see that R2 did his sounds instead of the lady saying it in English, okay? But it still let us know how I help you so that you are understanding what R2D2 is saying, okay? Um, I do like this tab right here. I'm actually going to add that tab to the rest of these responses that he does. So backslash T, backslash T, backslash T. So that when we look at this, we know who's talking. So this is my speech, that's his speech, that's tabbed. That's my speech, and then his speech will be tabbed next time. Okay, uh, that worked. I uh, said, I will bring that up on YouTube for you, which is nice. And it uh, looks like it says, best recipe for July, cakes, cupcakes, and more yummy desserts. Awesome. So that is working nicely. It brought that up just fine. That is it for that tutorial. If you enjoyed that, please drop down a like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so that you are always notified for whenever I come out with a new video. If you have any suggestions for my next tutorial, please let me know down in the comments. The reason that I came out with this video is because a lot of followers were asking me to make it for them, so I did. I love listening to you guys, and I want to make what makes you happy. So have a happy new year, stay safe, and happy coding.